This message comes to you from Withenshaw Community Church, Manchester. We hope that you are inspired and challenged by God's Word. Good morning, church. Did we skip breakfast this morning? Good morning, church. That's more like it. That's more like For a minute, I thought I was in the wrong church. That's not WCC, the WCC that I know. Good to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. Good, God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Just want to take this opportunity to thank Pastor Russ and the leadership of the church for giving me this opportunity to share the word of God with you this morning. We serve the mighty God. We serve a loving God. And we serve an awesome God. Amen? Amen. Just want to welcome those that are watching online as well. I pray that you are being blessed just as we are being blessed in the sanctuary this morning. Uh, thank you all for joining us this morning. It was a bit of a chilly morning, wasn't it? And um, God is good. He has enabled us to, you know, beat the um, feelings of just wanting to stay in bed. And, you know, we are here this morning. We just want to give God the praise for that. You know, when God created the nation of Israel, he revealed himself to the people of Israel in so many ways uh, at many different times. He wanted them to know him, for example, as Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. I mean, we know him today like the, just the same. He is our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. He meets all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? He provides for us. He wants us to know him as our provider. The Lord is our shepherd. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He provides for me when I'm ever, whenever I'm in need. He will do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever imagine or comprehend. And my God shall meet all my needs according to his riches and glory. And so he also revealed himself to them as Jehovah Nissi, the banner of victory. You know, when they were transitioning from uh, the land of Egypt, where they were in slavery, to the promised land of Canaan, he was with them. And all the battles that they fought, he was alongside them. He provided them with victory. And so they came to know him as Jehovah Nisi, their banner of victory. And just like us today, God is fighting for us in all the battles that we are fighting in our lives. He wants to be um, there for us in all our struggles. And they also, know, they also got to know him as Jehovah Shammah, the ever-present one. One who never leaves us nor forsakes us. Psalm 139 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. God is always present. We cannot hide from the Lord. I mean, when we get to heaven, maybe we can have a chat with this guy called Jonah who tried to you know, hide from the Lord. God spoke to him even whilst he was in the belly of a fish. That means God sees us everywhere where we are. He knows exactly where we are and he can reach us. They also got to know him as Jehovah Orion, their lights. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 
the entrance of your word brings light. That means when we are walking in the word of God, we are the light of the world. Amen? Amen. I mean, last, uh, last Saturday, not this one, the one before, us men were blessed with the ministry of uh, Brother Ben. He was talking about being the salt of the earth, being the light of the world. And when we have God's word, we can walk in the light of God. Can you say amen? amen? Then he manifested to them also as Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. He gives us that kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. So that when we go through some challenges, people will look at us and say, but how come you are so calm? How, how, how are you managing to handle this? When you are going, we just remain peaceful because our God is with us. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And then he also manifested himself to them as Jehovah Rapha, their healer. You know, sickness and diseases have to bow before the Lord. God has the power to remove all burdens and destroy all yokes because he reigns with healing under his wings. And then he manifested himself to them as Jehovah Roy, the loving shepherd. He is the great shepherd of the sheep, one who will leave the 99 in search of one that is lost. How loving is that? He is a loving God. He is a caring God. So this morning, I want to share a little bit on Jehovah Mkadesh, uh, our sanctifier. God willing, as uh, we go um, uh, in the next few weeks and months, I might be sharing on some of these names. You know, uh, God has placed in my heart you know, to, to, to share about these uh, the names of God and how he manifested himself to his people. And now we know him in the same way that uh, the Israelites got to know him. So I want to talk about Jehovah Mkadesh this morning, our sanctifier. More so because we are at the beginning of a new year and I believe that we want to be blessed in 2023. How many want to be blessed in 2023? I don't want us to miss our blessings because of certain things that we are holding on to certain people that are in our lives that have to go because God is positioning us to a place where he wants to bless us. Amen? Amen. How many are excited about that? Amen. Praise the Lord. So the word sanctify itself coming from sanctification is a bit of a mouthful, but it's a very simple word that talks about being set apart. It means being um, removed from. That's what it simply means. And over the years, uh, during my study of the Bible, during my prayer and everything, whenever I thought about sanctification, this thing always came to my mind. When I was growing up, my mom had uh, a display unit. I don't know if people have them in their homes these days, but uh, it was made, it had a wooden base, it had some wood on the side and the top, but it was mainly glass. So that, you know, you could look through it and see the you know, uh, the china, the expensive um, cups and plates that were in there. And uh, I know for sure that we never used the, 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 the plates from the display unit on a daily basis. They were reserved for special occasions. Yeah, some of you will know what I'm talking about. Oh, my mom, she, she loved the display unit. It was, it was it, you know, if she said, go and put the plates in the display unit, that you would carry them like this, you know, and, 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 and make sure that you don't break any. And, and the plates from the, from the display unit were used on, only on special occasions. And, and as a young boy, I, 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 was, I always looked to see if we had a visitor coming to ours, to see if they are going to get, you know, they are going to use the, the plates from the display unit. It was some kind of a measure of me to see whether they are, you know, <laughs> Well, my mom is going to be with the Lord, so she can't uh, say anything about it. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, so God has done the same with us. He has put us aside for his own noble use. God is the porter, the Bible says. We are the workmanship. We, we are the work of his hands. And so he has the right 
He has the prerogative. He has the, 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 the right to do what he wants with our lives. But sometimes it's not like that. We, we don't give him that chance. We, we always say, I, I don't feel like this, God. I don't feel like doing this. We put our feelings ahead of his plan. But it should not be like that because God is the maker. He has the right to do what he wants with our lives. Amen? Amen. I kind of agree with a guy called Mark Twain, if you can put that slide for me, please, who said, um, what did he say? He said, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. You know why? Because a lot of people are living in this world not knowing their purpose for being in this world. If you ask people, they tell you, what do you do? Yes, I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm a doctor. I'm a, um, a teacher. I mean, those professions are important. We need them because they make our lives easier and they make our lives more comfortable. But they are not the primary reason why God created us. God created us so that we can love him, so we can worship him, so we can have fellowship with him, so we can have communion with him, and so that we can serve him. That is the primary purpose why God created each and every one of us. It's not for us to have the, all the professions that we have are good, but they are not the primary purpose why God created us. It's important for us to know why God has put us on this earth. Amen? Amen. In order for God to use us, he has chosen to separate us. That's why he separate us from the things of this world. That's why we are talking about the process of sancti sanctification. That's why we are talking about sanctification this morning. He has to set us aside from the things of this world that would otherwise hinder us from serving him. Amen? Amen. So I've entitled the message this morning, Living a Sanctified Life. And there are many things that we can say about living a sanctified life. I want to start by making a demonstration this morning using these two jars. Um, so this jar, I don't know if you can see from the back, these are grains of rice, white in color. The other jar has got uh, cocoa pops, <laughs> brown in color. These are very popular in my house, by the way. Even, even more popular than rice. <laughs> but uh, it's one of those things. So this represents the sanctified, those that God has set aside. This represents those that are not yet sanctified. And uh, the way God has made is done is, you know, put his plan is that, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if those that are sanctified would just live by themselves like that in their own corner like this? Those that are not sanctified, those that believe in other things, don't believe in God, would live separately. Wouldn't that be easier? Wouldn't that be nice? There will be no quarrels, there will be no disagreements, no fights. Because some of the problems that we are facing in this world at this moment in time are a result of religious conflicts. People believe in different things. My faith is better than yours, uh, that kind of thing. That's why there's no peace in the world at the moment. So if the, God had left like this, that would be nice, then no problems. But that's not what he has done. God has put those that are sanctified in the same world as those that are not sanctified. So this is our world, right? And even though there are two colors in there, you can still see the distinction, can't you really? You can still see the white color and the brown color. That's how God has made it. He has made those that are sanctified to live side by side with those that are not yet sanctified. But even though he has done that, because he wants those that are sanctified to be of influence to those that are not yet sanctified. Amen? Amen. So what happens when we are sanctified? Uh, 
one of the things that come as a result of sanctification is that we lose family and friends. Amen? Amen. We lose family and friends because some of, the, some of those people, some of those people in our lives are not going in the same direction as we are going. And uh, isolation does not feel good. What does he say in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 to 18? This is Paul speaking. He says, therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the almighty God. So he's saying, come out from them. Separate yourselves from them. And that way, I will be your father. I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Isolation does not feel good, but sometimes it is necessary for God to put us in a place where he can bless us. When we become isolated from friends and relatives for God's purposes, we can sometimes feel lonely. But then at the same time, we are not alone because we have the Holy Spirit working within us. We have the Holy Spirit keeping us busy with the kings of the things of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So we are not alone. And, and, and sometimes also uh, isolation can remove us from distractions. It brings protection and removes us from other distractions. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 35, the Apostle Paul said, I'm saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may, have, you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. Did you see that? Undivided devotion to the Lord. That means your focus, everything about you is about God. You give him time, you spend time in his presence, time to worship him, time to do what he says you should do. So isolation is not necessarily a bad thing. Amen? We may be hated by the world, but we are not of this world. See, this world is not our home. That's, that's the other thing, that, uh, that other mistake that people make. They think this is it. This is not it. We are only passing through this world. This world is not our home. We are only sojourning in this world. Yeah? Okay, we have the right to be here. God wants us to enjoy everything that he has created, everything that we see. But this is not our permanent home. We are only passing through. We have dual citizenship. We, 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 we have the right to be on earth, but our home is in heaven. Amen? Amen. Dual citizenship. For example, I myself, I've got a British passport, right? But I have also got a Zimbabwean passport. Two passports I have. When I'm in Great Britain, I'm a legal citizen of this country. When I go to Zimbabwe, I'm also a legal citizen of that country. So when I travel to Zimbabwe, when I get to the airport in Zimbabwe, I bring, my, I bring out my Zimbabwean passport at the immigration. And they see me, they look at the passport, they say, oh, welcome back home, say. Enjoy your stay. When I finish my holiday, coming back to the UK where I live, I switch the passports, I bring out the British passports. Pass through immigration, they see my passport. Welcome back home, sir. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that amazing? Some of you have got your passport uh, citizenship. You know what I'm talking about. But that is the same with us here on earth. This is our home, but we also have a home in heaven where we will live uh, in mansions that God has prepared for us. We will be walking streets made of gold. Uh, how many is excited about that? Sometimes, sometimes when I think about that, I'm thinking, mm, maybe I need to go back home. But, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, it's good to be in this world at the same time. Amen? Sanctification brings a commitment to obedience and a surrender to God's timeline. It is a progressive separation from sin towards righteousness so that we may become like Christ. That is the goal of sanctification, for us to become Christ-like, 
to become like Christ. So Christ becomes our benchmark. We are not trying to be like any other person on earth. They have their own race to run. We are trying to become like Christ. Amen? And it takes being different to make a difference. If we want to make a difference in this world, we must be different from this world. And you do not have to be liked by everyone. You don't have to be respected by everyone. Your assignment on earth is different from everyone else's. So you need to stay focused on your mission. Amen? Amen. You see, when Moses died, the word of the Lord came to Joshua saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now I want you to lead the people of Israel to the promised land. I will give you every place where you set your foot. For as I was with Moses, so will I also be with you. This is the word that came to Joshua when he took over from uh, Moses, when Moses had died. Verse number 6 of Joshua chapter 1, verse, six, uh, chapter one verse says, Be strong and be courageous. Be strong and be what? Courageous. And be courageous. What was God saying there? God was saying that I'm not promising you that it's going to be easy to lead these people into uh, the promised land. You are going to have to fight some battles. You are going to meet challenges. You are going to face the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Moabites, the Canaanites, and all the other ites. You see, all their names, they end up with ites, ites, ites at the end. So I might have left other ites. You are going to face all those challenges. But this is what I'm promising you. I am promising you my presence. Oh, you know, when, when, when the presence of God is there, you have victory. Victory in all circumstances of life. Victory in our health. Victory in our jobs. Victory in our careers. In our relationships. We have the victory of God. And so he said to, Moses, uh, to Joshua, you are now the leader. You take the people. Cross over the river Jordan. I'm promising you my presence. I'm going with you. Just like I was with my servant Moses. Because we need the presence of God in our lives. More so nowadays when we are facing challenges from different angles. We are being bombarded with so many changes in our lives. Some of these changes are difficult to, to, to deal with. So that's why we need the presence of God. We cannot do this in our own strength. God's presence in our lives is our strength. No matter what comes our way or what situation we find ourselves in, we rely on the power of God that is within us. The power of God is what we rely on. You know, when birds are looking for somewhere where they want to land, they want to sit, put on that slide for me for a, uh, with a bird, please. They don't look around to see which branch is strong or anything like that. It says a bird sitting on the branch of a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking. Do we know why? Because its strength is in its wings. So if the branch breaks there, do you think the bird is going to fall and then, you know, it's not going to happen. It's simply going to fly away because it's relying on the strength of its wings, not on the strength of the branch. And that's who we are in God. Our strength is in God. Wherever we find ourselves in, wherever we land, we know that God is with us. Can you say amen? amen. God is good? All the time. All the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. That's what he says in Psalm 91. He that dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. 
he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. We'll find refuge where? Under his feathers. Under his wings. Because God has called us, we have to rely on his power. Not the power of our own strength or our own wisdom. But the power of God which is at work with us, within us. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Listen to this. He says, I came in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Why? So that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. He is saying that I did not come with eloquence. I, I did not come with the words of wisdom. But I came with a demonstration of the power of God. Because we need to see the power of God in our lives. We need the power of God in our lives. Amen? Amen. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is his power. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is peace. There is unity. There is love, there is righteousness, there is grace and the power to be separated from the things of this world. I want us to read a very short passage of scripture that talks about the separation of Abraham from Lot. I want to ask you to stand. It's just a very short passage of scripture. Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 to 18. Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 to 18. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had departed from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abraham went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord also. God bless you. You may be seated. So just uh, to put a little bit of context to the passage that we have just read, uh, there was a dispute between the servants of Lot and the servants of Abraham. And um, Abraham said, now look, cousin Lot, there will be no quarreling between the two of us. Let this thing that has happened not separate us or ruin our relationship. This is what we will do. This Abraham saying this to Lot. This is what we will do. If you choose to go to the left, I will go to the right. If you choose to go to the right, I will go to the left. Let us pass. Let us part in a good way. In a good way, we don't want to ruin our relationships. So Lot looked around, and then he chose the what looked to him like the fertile plains of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. That's that's where he went. But even before that, you would think that, you know, if you were Lot, would you not ask Abraham to say, now, now, Abraham, you are the man of God here. Where do you want me to go? You tell me where you want me to go. You make the decision. But that's not what he did. Lot stood by the highlands and, you know, he surveyed the land and, you know, he felt, okay, I'll go this way and you go this way. So then Abraham went to the lands of um, lowlands of Mamre in Hebron, whereas Lot went to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot saw the world, but Abraham saw the promised land. Lot looked in self-sufficiency, but Abraham looked in trust of the covenant. 
Lot looked with a heart driven by greed and materialism, whereas Abraham looked with a heart driven by a sacrificial love of unity. Lot looked through the eyes connected to the world, Abraham with eyes connected to the spiritual world. And so Lot took what looked like uh, the good land of Sodom and Gomorrah. But why, what he did not know was that the land that he chose was about to go up in smoke. He did not know that that land is where he was also going to lose his wife. Because you know that uh, they were to- when they were running away, they were told not to look back. And what did Lot's wife do? She looked back. And what happened to her? She became a pillar of salt. What a way to lose your, your, your wife. They could not do anything about it. They just left her like that. as a pillar of salt. So what we get in life sometimes depends on where we are looking from. I want us to see that God's covenant with Abraham was renewed after Lot had parted with him. Which means that there are some people in our lives that we have to part with if God is to bless us. There are some people and some things that we have to leave behind because God is taking us somewhere. This year in 2023, there are some friends that you might have to unfriend. Amen? Amen. It is a tough decision to make, but it is necessary for spiritual growth. It is necessary for God to bless us. How many want to be blessed in 2023? We are all looking forward to God's blessings in 2023. But we have to position ourselves in such a way that we will receive God's blessing. Amen? Amen. Verse 17 says, Go walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I'm giving it to you. We see here the confirmation of God's will for Abraham after Lot had left. By this time Lot had gone, he was out of the picture. So some people must leave because they cannot see what you are seeing. You cannot let those that cannot see where you are going, you know, distract you from going where God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. Abraham pitched his tent in Mamre in Hebron. And the name Mamre means fatness. The name Hebron means blessing. So Abraham set his camp where God was about to give him fat blessings, having now adapted to life without lots. So God will bless you when he has separated you from people and things that have been holding you back spiritually. When you think of it, people walk in and out of our lives all the time. Some of you came from other countries, some of you were born in this country, but if you were to put a number to the number of people that came in and out of your lives, you will see that so many people, you have even forgotten some of the friends that you had in your childhood. People come in and go all the time. Don't get tied up to people. More so nowadays when we are living in a globalized society, you know, where there is this vast movement of people and goods. People are traveling all the time. You know, you meet new people at your new job, you relocate to another place, you meet new people. If they are not the right fit for you, if they are not the right people to be around you, you leave them behind. If they are going to distract you from what God has for you, leave them behind. Like I said, it's a tough decision, but it has to be made. Amen? Amen. Verse 18, Abraham did what he always did, build an altar for the Lord. Everywhere Abraham settled, he found it in his heart to find a place where he would build an altar and pray to God. Spend quality time with God. Spend time in the presence of God. As a sanctified child of God, as a sanctified child of God, we must, you must also find time for the Lord in your life. You must build an altar in your life for Uh, the presence of God. Can I have the worship team come upstairs, please? 
I want to tell you this story that I heard about um, a man who survived a shipwreck. So all the other crew, all the other members of the crew died in the, in the, in the sea, but this man survived because he had a life jacket and he found himself on the, sh on the shore of an island, a small deserted island. And so he survived. He stayed on that island for many days, expecting that somebody would pass through and rescue him. But he was there for a very, very long time. And he came to the point where he felt <coughs> this was now his new home. He was not going to get any help. Many days passed by. This man was a believer. And you know what he did? He also built an altar for the Lord. And he spent hours in the presence of God, praying all the time. One day he went to bed and he woke up early in the morning only to find the altar on fire. Early hours of the morning. He was angry with God. He was mad. And he said, Lord, is it something that I did? Is it something that I said that you would bend the altar where I've been communicating with you, where I've been worshipping you? Could you not at least protect that altar? So he closed his eyes and, and he was hunting and he was, you know, mad with God and everything. When he opened his eyes, he looked at the sea and he saw a very small item in the water. And that, uh, that thing grew bigger and bigger, you know, each time after a few minutes it was growing bigger and bigger. Sure enough, it was a boat that was coming in his direction. He could not believe it. He couldn't believe that he could find ref, re, uh, rescue in that, in that uh, place where he was. After some time, the boat came to where he was. And as he stood on the island, seeing the boat there, he could not believe it. And he collapsed and fainted. The next time he opened his eyes, he found himself in the boat with the people. Loving people, taking care of him, giving water, giving food, making sure he was comfortable. And he asked them this question, how did you find me? This place here, no boats or ship passed pass, pass through this area. How did you find me? They said, we saw the smoke from the fire that you lit. We saw the smoke from the fire that you set this morning. And we realized that there was somebody there who needs help. That's why we came. The fire for which he was complaining to God. He did not set up the fire. God himself set up the fire for him to be noticed. Our God works in mysterious ways. Amen. We say the God who is able to do exceedingly more than we can ever imagine or even expect. This is the story of someone here this morning. You might not be on a physical island as such. But maybe you are in that place where you think, okay, nothing is going to change. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe your health has not been well for a long time and you think, ah, maybe nothing is going to change. Maybe it's a relationship issue that you have. I want to tell you this morning that our God is able. I want to encourage you to build an altar for the Lord in your hearts. Praise the Lord, worship Him with everything that you have. God will see the fire that is burning from your heart. And you will send angels to come to your rescue. We serve a mighty God. We serve a good God. Our God is able. Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you all. If you can stand. We hope that you've been inspired and challenged by this message. For more information about Wizenshaw Community Church Manchester, please visit wizenshawcommunitychurch.org.